hit my head. Somebody help me. I'm in the bed. I won't be a street, you see. I want you down the left of me. I won't be a street. Why you don't love me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't be a street, you see. Ah, why you don't love me? I won't be a street. Why you don't love me? People here, too many guys, I try to make a living. It's rough. I told you it stinks. Fifth Street I hate it, man. Fifth Street is to me is like hell. Pretty good, you get much fights there, you know. Fifth Street okay. Been a lot of them. All you have to do is have two feet, four hands, and take a walk. The only thing I love is Hollywood. Studio City, MGM. Daryl Selznick, you tell them you talk to the sailor. Sometimes, man, I do things, radical things, man, like I want to... Uh, I see a guy with a suit on, man, I like to take a baseball bat and blast him in the head and take his money, man. You know, I get this way. And sometimes I feel as though, I said, I'm down on the street, I'm a young man, I'm 23 years old. I sometimes want to get up and, and, and go up in City Hall and say, look, man, I'm hungry, I'm looking for a job, a decent job, you know. I don't want to cause you trouble. Give me a job, give me a break, or some shit like that. I see people down here, man, that argue and fight about 20 cents. History is nothing but homosexuality. It is nothing but um, people coming down there and um, living off of other people. I'll tell you about the queers here. Number one, when you come to town, man, and you're a guy, first thing you do, you get off the bus. And so, blam, you walk off. The first place you say, well, man, I'm in L.A. So you look around and you see a lot of live action, man. So, blam, man, you mess around, screw around, and stuff like that. So you run out of bread, you know. You say, well, maybe I go, the guys, you meet different guys and all this, you know. So they say, well, look, man, go to the blood bank. So you go to the blood bank, make a few bucks, man. That's four dollars, man, for a pint of blood, you know. Four dollars for a large pint of blood, man. That's a group, man. Okay, so uh, you goof around, goof around. So, man, man, you see, guys, he says, uh, hello there. <laughs> you see, uh, you know, like, blam, man. Kept man, he man, and everything got muscles all ripping down on his back and everything. And uh, cat hits on you, man. He said, "Well, you can make fifteen dollars, ten dollars, maybe five dollars. Depends upon the individual's, you know, situation, man, and how bad off he is, you know. And uh, like, blam, man, five dollars, ten dollars for you, man. You say, well, if I get five dollars, I can do so and so and so, you know, like." That's what all us folks say, so and so and so. Well, mostly they want sex, you know? And sex, I will not give to anybody unless it's worthwhile. Let's face it. If I'm going to give uh, sex to anybody, you know, the hell of them, you know? For myself, I'd rather be working. I wouldn't well, take a job right now if they paid uh, $20 an hour. Well, you know, I wouldn't take it. You buy them a drink. And then all at once, you buy him a jug, and you buy him a flop. And then all at once, you jack rub. He jumped on me in the hotel over there. And at 59, I got up and knocked him down twice. 
So he went upstairs and come back with a wine bottle. I didn't see him. So he hit me in the head. Knocked me clear in the motherfucking middle street. I was at the Chapman Hotel. A guy come in there, he accused me of taking his watch after I registered. That was between him and the clerk. And I don't wear watches. I haven't worn a watch since I sold my Omega in San Francisco for $5. I've got a lung out, five and a half ribs, arthritis the spine, Four tracks in my back. I to watch the veins. Now that's all that is. Well, sir, it's pretty rough. It gets awful cold. It's rain on us. Sometimes we go around here in an underground tunnel, parking lot, and lay there. When a man gets shaky, he's got to do something about it. You get a bottle, and that's a blanket. You cover yourself with the bottle. You drink it, you don't feel no cold. You don't feel nothing. You don't miss no more. Right? Right. You get a boost out of it. You know what I mean? We got a shot out of it. You can lay down, you can lay down and go to sleep. As long as you got the vino in. When you got no vino, you wake up cold. I don't like it. I drink it for my nerves. Just kind of settle me down. I don't like one. I don't like no kind of drinks. I have family troubles. I'll never get them dis dispersed. <coughs> but I drink. But I drink because I enjoy drinking that wine. I have a lot of buddies that drink wine with me. I drink like a sandwich, man. <laughs> I took a look like hell, man. Shit. I could out drink ten white people, man. I think about the past and I don't want to get away from it. That's why I drink. Now I'll tell you the truth from my heart. I couldn't tell you. Really and truly, I couldn't. But I'll just do it. I went to church. I go over there and the people pray for me. That don't help me any. I can just come back. Drink some more. And lay here, you know that a man ain't supposed to lay in this mud like this. I got more sense than this. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell you that, buddy, but uh, it just goes like that, you know. Once you start drinking, you know, in the morning when you get up, you know, you kind of shake it, you, know, you get shaky. You, 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 you need a drink then. Then you have to go down there and look for somebody. Here comes your buddy. Hey, come here. I know you need a drink. Yeah. And then that's where he starts off again. Starts all the way up. And you have to keep on drinking. <laughs> Tell you why I drank. Drink? It's the only time, man, I'm happy, man, and I feel cool, man. Nothing bothers me. I don't have to. But when you sober up, man. <laughs> you take an alcoholic, uh, a drink comes first. And believe me, you get mighty sorry. When you get low, down, and out, you just start thinking about your family. Well, as long as you get the money in your pocket, you, you're figuring, well, I'll get another drink. I'll get another drink. But uh, then after you sober up a little bit, you see your mistake. My wife left. She said she'd be back, look, and she'd never come back. I've been two years and I started drinking. Been drinking wine, with anything I can get. When she said, I'm gonna leave you as soon as kids get big enough, I'm gonna take off. I said, okay. Well, after 
she left, he like to kill me for three years. I told her if she ever took another drink, I was going to leave her. And unfortunately, I come out uh, in February, no, it was January. No, it was February. Yeah, February the 2nd. Uh, I gave her 25 bucks for her, you know, go down, get herself a new dress, I mean, you know, buy something. I mean, you know, women like new things. I mean, when she wanted a bra or panties, any little, little articles, because I didn't have time. I mean, well, met him at the age shop. So I gave her the bread, and uh, when I come home, I mean, she's, she's blasted. And she says, Honey, I've been drinking. I said, no shit. <laughs> One look and you can tell. I mean, you can surmise this. <laughs> I was tending bar. And my mother-in-law would come tell liars all the time. Said so he's flirting with all the girls, taking them out. Honey, can I take them out if I'm tending bar? I can't take them. It's impossible. Hey, man. I just took off my shirt, I put on another t-shirt, I didn't even bother showering or nothing. Put on another t-shirt, put on a white shirt. Started out, she says, you're not going to leave me. <laughs> she ripped, ripped the clothes off. <laughs> These are the scratches over here on this side of the face. <laughs> She's a wild son of a man. When she was sober, a wonderful woman. Beautiful, good cup. Wonderful love. But keeping her sober was something else. It was, a, it was a problem. So, consequently, I mean, uh, when we split, I mean, I went back to the jug. I drink every day. I mean, I don't make any bones about it. I mean, I drink wine. Whiskey, I won't, uh, I won't hit because uh, if I drink it, I get mean. And beer gives me gas. So, I drink wine. Wine is fine. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> it's the best in the West. We blew the cap. It's all right. We want anything leak out of the cap as long as we hold the bottle. I'm divorced in '56. Oh, well, they knew that. They knew. They know. Cause I, once in a while, I write to my to my daughter. She knows where I am. Every once in a while, I write to her. And she always tell me, Daddy, why don't you come home? Mama wants you back, but I don't want her to go back to my wife. I want her beside me, not where she's at. But if I go and see her, it's not going to do her any good. And it sure shit ain't going to do me any good. I mean, just, just tear my ass up. Marriage. Why? It's a hard thing to understand, it's explain. With all these pills and so forth that's going on, you know. The hell with it. My wife said she was tired of waiting on my mother day after day. As long as I have my mother, I got everything. I love my mother better than I did my wife, because I love my wife, didn't go. Not in that point, but my mother. It's the one that brought me in this world. And naturally, I'd rather see her through than uh, see the woman that I married. Hello, Ma. Hello, Bob. Your bum was home. She was one of the swellest people you ever saw. She was a Christian. Belonged to Pentecostal God, a church. But she never fussed at me about my drink. She'd just tell me you are not a drink that slop because you're going to die. She'd say, okay. I'm sorry. Come on in, kid. My mother had left me, man. She left me. I remember when my father came home and he had his hat turned up. He had a cigar in his mouth. He said, where's your mama? <laughs> He's from Texas. He's the illiterate guy, but he wasn't really good. He's illiterate. He told me, where's your mama? No, no, no. You know, my brother did all the rapping and talking and stuff. And we found out she ran off to Alaska. I've only got one person to love in this world. That's my mother. I was 17 years old. 
I came home from work. I was working as a grocery work, you know. Packing groceries and all that, you know. I came home from work. And my father and mother were having a fight. So I asked them, I says, uh, what's happening? And uh, father says, well, daddy has to go home. I said, why do you need to go home? And he says, well, I have to leave. And he pushed me away, you know, and my mother, my mother told me, she says, uh, she says, well, my, your, your daddy left you. This thing, that's the only friend you got in the world, your mother. These guys, man, we were sitting down in the pool hall and everything, and we were looking for a piece of ass, you know. And so the guy said, well, look, man, uh, we ain't got much money, but I know this old broad, man, that uh, I can turn you on to some pussy, too, you know. They said, well, look here, uh, let's go up on, uh, I forgot what street we lived on. So, Blam, we went up there, man, uh, and I found out it was my mother, you know. These cats were talking about, let's go get some pussy, we can get it for a few dollars, you know. We can get it for a few dollars. It was my mother. I was in the car with the guy when he pulled up to the house. And I tried to make it in my mind and try to believe, man, that maybe my mother had some woman in the house. You understand, but I knew it was my mother. I have a mother, I have a father too, but uh, they don't think too much of me, you know? You know why? Because I'm a qu uh. Like around here, they dig young guys, you know? And uh, I've had, I've dealt with homosexuals like, you know, I screwed them and erect them, man. Uh, you know? And, <laughs> like, man, uh, they, you know, like suck my joint. Joint means, man, like peanuts. They, they, they tried to, uh, to uh, make me straight, really. They did. They have tried, really. So I took a cat home, man. The cat told me, well, go home, man. We'll have sex and mellow sex and shit like that. So I go home, we're drinking and bullshit and talking shit and everything, man. So the cat says, uh, says something, man, like, uh, calls me a dirty name, you know, which I don't dig. So what am I supposed to do <laughs> but kick his ass? But when I got up to the ship, man, this is his intent, man. He intended for me to do this, you know. I sympathize with the dude, but if I didn't condemn him, I just feel that, man, people have got lives that this society has got to recognize, man. Like, these people, man, these big shots, man, these multi-millionaires, man, and multi-millionaires, man, they suck dick and eat cunt and shit like this at nighttime, and the next morning they get up and read in the newspaper where some guy got robbed of $50 and they say, ain't that a shame? <laughs> ain't that a chip, man? Ain't that a chip? These phony mother... <laughs> it's some phony things here, man. to wonder if a man still has a mind in his head. My life, I don't like it very much. I've often, I've often thought of getting rid of it. I like to look back, see why man was created and things like that. Why and, and where, where, he, where he created, why he's created and what, he, what he's doing and why he was uh, S such a misshapen looking uh, I'm going back goddamn like lay down or I've got to go why why did man lay there for 4000 years you. without knowing what we know today why why did man lay there for 4000 years shooting on stuff jump off a bridge do anything but I carry a bible in my pocket so I can't do that
And, uh, incidentally, what happened to the Bronze Age? Well, I don't give a goddamn. My buddy's gonna take care of me. You take care of me. I to don't give a goddamn. Y'all, why lie? To where men knew about metal. Tell us truth over this thing. That's what, what caused, that's the way to do. I just wonder what I'll caused tell the truth. What caused it to And tell everybody in the world. I got we well, slump just a little. <laughs> I figured out I'm a daggone alcoholic. I'm not worth a... I'm not worth anything to anybody. Where I'm living, I really don't know. The man started to uh, shit. get a little thought and stuff like that. There might be some some theories in you there. Take, you take your start, I take mine. As to why man yeah. would lay back in there for 10,000 years. I'd get myself squared away, and I'd start investing. The first boat comes along. I'll sign on it. If she goes down, I'll go down with her. I wish that God could give me a help, you know. God, he'll guide me and probably into an alley. I just want to go back to Warren Springs. I was sober there for 31 days. I want to go to St. Louis, Missouri. See my children. I have three children. Two boys and one daughter. And my youngest son has at least 10 kids. I have about three great-grandchildren. I have never seen any of them. I'd like to have a family, man, like one of those kind of families you see in the movies, man. Like, uh, you come home, you have been gone two or three years, man. Everybody's glad to see you, you know. I would want to uh, be happy and, uh, oh, well, have, uh, have, uh, have a nice, a nice mother and father who could do, uh, you know. I like to have a boat. It was a 30 or 40 footer. 
to sell the oceans, fish, sell the South Sea Islands. This is my dream in life. There's no joke. I like to have a boat, sell the islands and so forth. A few of my wino friends, they might not need, we might not need know where we go to. As long as they go, you know. It's hard to explain. Try eternity. <laughs>